Today we're going to be focusing on cloud computing and what the difference is between public and private clouds. We're also going to be looking at benefits and drawbacks of cloud computing. Now it stems very nicely from networks that we ended up with something called the internet and we're now leveraging the internet for all sorts of services, especially software, which can be quite useful and quite powerful compared to the traditional desktop based applications that were prevalent before that. So if you went back in history you'd probably see that a computer normally had an application software that was just installed on that. Then we had a network or LAN based software and now we have global software available to us with some significant reach and scale. You have access to immense processing power which allows you to have significantly powerful applications on your computer without the need of a faster processor. So let's look at a few key terms that you might come across in this particular lesson. Do pause the video and make sure you take these down in your exercise book. The first one is obviously cloud storage which in simplistic terms means a method of data storage where data is stored on off-site servers. There's a term called data redundancy, which is quite commonly used in this particular field. And that basically means that data is stored on several servers in case of maintenance or, or repair. So if one server by accident goes down, data can still be accessed on another server. And the user does not even know that something is wrong. Next up is cloud software. And these are services available on demand often hosted and provided by the same company. And finally, we have cloud computing, which is the delivery of computing services, including servers, etc., over the internet. So let's start by looking at cloud storage. The basics of cloud computing begin with storage itself. There's an immense amount of data that is generated every day, every single interaction, even the fact that you're watching this video is probably being stored somewhere. And this data is stored on off-site servers, which could be over many locations all over the world. The same data can be stored on more than one server in case of maintenance and repair. And this particular aspect is known as data redundancy. Normally a hosting company manages the physical storage location. So you might have someone like Amazon, you might have somebody like Google, some of these big companies who will be managing all aspects of cloud storage and you simply just access the service you pay for it and you get access to this servers or basically a small space storage space on their servers now there are three main types of cloud as they're called the public cloud where the customer and the cloud storage provider are different companies so think about this as your own one at home you probably buy a service and your cloud storage provider and you are two different individuals or two different organizations or a customer or a client and a company any possible combination then you have the private cloud which normally means that it's been hidden behind a firewall both the customer and the provider are integrated and operate as a single entity basically that means that Amazon providing services for its affiliates or itself. And any kind of combination between private and public is known as hybrid cloud. Now, cloud storage obviously, like everything, has pros and cons. So do pause the video and have a look in detail about what these pros and cons are. And some of the pros that are highlighted are that the customer files are normally stored on the cloud and can be accessed anytime, anywhere from any device, provided that you have access to the internet. There's no need for the client or the customer to carry an external storage device with them. They can just access their data anywhere. And it provides the user with remote backup as well. So you do not need to worry about backing up your data. The server automatically backs up your data as well data redundancy is built in. That allows you to recover data if you yourself have a hard disk failure because your data is saved in the cloud. And you're offered unlimited storage capacity, which links to the first disadvantage of 
cloud storage is that the costs can be very high, especially if large storage capacity is required. It can be expensive to pay for high downloads and upload. Data transfer limits are of often very expensive uh, and your ISP might be charging you for it. Of course, if you've got a slow or unusable internet connection, you might have problems accessing and downloading your file. Another disadvantage is potential failure of the cloud storage company and that can happen that the company fails and their servers are not accessible anymore and then you can't access the data that you paid to store online. There are obviously quite a few major issues with cloud storage as well and that's to do with the location of the servers themselves. That's, these servers are huge so they are stored in warehouses in remote locations and there is a need for physical security stuff like buildings guards locks cctv etc data loss is also a possibility accidental loss can happen of course there could be things like power failures and then deliberate damage can be caused as well by people natural disasters like fires floods earthquakes etc can also uh, make an impact on these cloud storage locations. And then there is the virtual security aspect of it. Who's going to access it? Hackers, ransomware attacks, all are possible because data is quite lucrative and people want to target companies such as cloud storage providers because once you shut their services down, customers can't access it and they probably are pressured to pay the ransom. And finally, there's personnel. People can have grudges, there could be a lack of training, fraud, all sorts of threats are possible there as well. A cloud service provider would need to make sure they take into account all of these. Now, cloud software, there are four main types that we are interested in. Of course, there's lots of other ones, but these are the four major categories. Cloud databases, cloud networking, cloud gaming or cloud software, and cloud analytical services. Normally, cloud software is provided by the same provider that offers you the storage, and it's normally on demand. You use it when you need it. The provider manages applications and hosting, as I was saying earlier. Everything, including security upgrades, is included for a subscription fee. Think of this as a subscription to Microsoft Office 365. You get access to all Microsoft's services, including OneDrive, Teams, the works. There's obviously no need to install this software because it's accessible anywhere and on any device. And it's normally fully tested software, which means that it's not created just for you. It's created for a huge amount of people and a lot of money is invested into it to test it to make sure it works. It also allows offline use. And think about this as you're working on Google Chrome, for example, or using Google Docs or even Netflix. And you can download data and you can upload any changes you make to the data back to the server when you're connected online. Now, what I would like you to do is pause the video and do some research for yourself. Try to investigate and find out three key points on each of the following cloud databases, cloud networking, cloud gaming and cloud software, and cloud analytical services. So think about how the application actually works. Like for example, in cloud gaming, you don't need access to a powerful computer. All the processing is done on the server side. You just send the control commands and you get a stream which allows you to get the processing back to you over the internet. So things like that is what I expect you to find. This should take you about 15 to 20 minutes. Even if you spend about five minutes looking for each one, it will take you some time as well. So make sure that you don't spend any more than the allocated time on this activity. So hopefully you've found out some details about the four. And all we are left with is, what is cloud computing? Now, if you go to Microsoft's website for Azure, which is their platform for cloud computing, you can search for this online. They've got a great definition and a great beginner's guide on what cloud computing is all about. 
And surprisingly, the answer is cloud computing is all of the above. Everything that we covered so far, from cloud storage to cloud software, all of that's combined together. The private cloud, the public cloud, all of that. So cloud computing basically means computations or computing or running applications over the internet. So do pause the video and have a quick read of the definition of cloud computing according to Microsoft. You might want to go to the website and have a look as well. It's exactly the same thing. And they also mentioned some benefits and quite clearly these are the benefits that we've discussed earlier. Cost, global scale, performance, speed, productivity, reliability and security. So make sure that you jot these ones down somewhere because these can come in the exam at some particular point as an exam question. List the benefits of cloud computing and there you go, you got about seven. That brings us nicely to the end of this particular lesson. And after going through the lesson, you should be able to answer what cloud storage is. What are the three types of cloud storage? Potential issues related to cloud storage advantages of cloud storage and what is cloud computing all about. Now next lesson we're going to move on to wireless and wired networking. Till next lesson then, bye for now.